This video is about solving for angles of a triangle using the trig function. So remember the trig functions, a way to help us remember is SOHCAHTOA. So sine is your opposite over your hypotenuse, cosine is your adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is your opposite over adjacent. So let's use our trig ratios to find missing angles. Make sure when we're finding missing angles then, that we are always rounding to the nearest whole number. So in number one, if we have angle X, we have our opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse sides. The adjacent and hypotenuse have a value on them, which means we are using cosine. So we have the cosine of X equals 11 over 13. To get the X by itself, we can't just divide by cosine. Instead, we have to use the cosine inverse. So to get x by itself, we would have the cosine inverse of 11 over 13. On our calculator then, notice that we have the sine cosine tangent buttons. If we are trying to find an angle though, we want to hit second and those buttons. So in this case, second cosine gives us a negative 1, and then we have our fraction, 11 divided by 13. So that would round to 32 degrees. In number two, we have our angle. We have opposite, adjacent, hypotenuse. This time we know the opposite and the adjacent side. So we would be using tangent. So the tangent of x equals 5 over 12. To get x, we use our inverse. So x equals the tan inverse of 5 over 12. So we get 23 degrees. In number three, we have the angle X. So we have opposite, adjacent, hypotenuse. This time we know the opposite and the hypotenuse. So we are using sine. So the sine of X equals 10 over 25. X equals the sine inverse of 10 divided by 25. So we hit second sine inverse, 10 divided by 25. And this would round to 24 degrees. In these problems, we are finding two angles. So we still only need to use trig once to find one of our missing angles. So based off of X, I'm going to label my sides opposite, adjacent, hypotenuse. So I know the opposite and the adjacent side, so I would use tangent. So the tangent of x equals 14 over 6. x equals the tan inverse of 14 divided by 6. And we get 67 degrees. Now, we could use trig and switch our sides to find y, or the easier thing is that we know in a triangle the angles equal 180 degrees. So y equals 1 is 90 minus 67. And that would get us that y is 23 degrees. In number 5, we have opposite, hypotenuse, and adjacent if we're using angle with the x. So this would be the opposite and the hypotenuse. So the sine of x equals 21 over 37. We can do our sine inverse. So x equals the sine inverse of 21 over 37. Second sine inverse, 21 divided by 37. That rounds to 35 degrees. So to get y, we can subtract from 180, 90 minus 35, and that is going to get us 55 degrees. In number six, we do not have a right angle right now. So we're going to draw in this right angle inside the isosceles triangle to create a right angle so that we can solve for x. Remember when we create that right angle, it splits our base in half. So we have 3.5 and 3.5. So we are going to focus on one triangle and find x first. So if we label our sides, we have information on the adjacent and hypotenuse, which is cosine. 
So we have the cosine of x equals 3.5 over 6. x equals cos inverse of 3.5 over 6. So we get 54 degrees. Now, finding y is a little different in this problem because it's an isosceles triangle. If the legs are congruent, the base angles are congruent. So we have two angles that are 54 degrees. So to find y, we would do 180 minus 54 minus 54, and that gets us 72 degrees. In number six, we need to draw a triangle because we don't have one. So remember, we're always using a right triangle. In triangle ABC, the measure of angle B is 90 degrees. We don't know where A and C are, so we're just going to put them in either spot is fine. AB has a length of 7. AC has a length of 10. Find the measure of angle A. So we're going to call angle A X. If I label my triangle... I have information on the adjacent and the hypotenuse, so I'm using cosine. So the cosine of x equals 7 over 10. So we can do the cosine inverse. And we would round to 46 degrees. Number seven is the same idea. We need to draw a triangle again, so we create our right triangle. So DE is five, DF is 11.3. Find the measure of angle F. So based on the measure of angle F, we have opposite hypotenuse adjacent. So we are using tangent. The tangent of X equals five over 11.3. So we have tan inverse of 5 over 11.3. So that is going to get us 24. So 24 degrees. In the last problems, we are going to solve for x, but it's a mixed review, so it's going to deal with the day 9 and day 10 notes. So sometimes we're going to find an angle, and sometimes we are going to find a side. Remember that angles round to the nearest whole number, and sides round to the nearest tenth. So in number one, based on the angle x, we have opposite adjacent hypotenuse. We know information on the opposite and the hypotenuse, so we are using sine. So the sine of x equals 14 over 33, so we have to do the inverse x equals the sine inverse of 14 over 30. So that is going to get us 25 degrees. In number two, we are looking for a side. So if we label our sides, we have opposite adjacent hypotenuse. We are using sine. So the sine of 10 equals x over 22. Remember when the variable is on top, we are multiplying. So 22 times the sine of 10 equals x. Rounding to the nearest tenth, we are going to get 3.8. In number 3, we have our angle x, and we can label our sides opposite hypotenuse adjacent. So we are using tangent. The tangent of x equals 17.2 over 30. So x equals the tan inverse of 17.2 over 30. So we are going to round to 30 degrees. In number four, based on angle 44, we have opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. We know the opposite and the adjacent side, so we're using tangent. The tangent of 44 equals 13 over x. When x is in the denominator, we are dividing, so x equals 13 divided by the tangent of 44. So 
So we get 13.5. In number 5, based on the angle X, we have opposite adjacent hypotenuse. We know the opposite and the hypotenuse, so the sine of X equals 8 over 23. We're going to use our inverse. So we get 20 degrees. In our last problem, we're looking for a side, so we know opposite adjacent hypotenuse. We have the adjacent and the hypotenuse, which is cosine, so the cosine of 22 equals 7 over x. Because x is the denominator, we are dividing. So we get 7.5.